Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks, and today's project is this pair of Magnani shoes. Now, this is a repair gone bad, unfortunately. These have been repaired before. Not very good. The seam right here, which they did a half leather sole to attach to the old sole. Well, if you do that type of a job, you're supposed to have it kind of flawless right there. It almost looks like the Himalayan mountains. I mean, it's like this, okay? Not good. Look at the actual shape of the shoe. See how they're crunched up? Now, I didn't do that. It was done like, it was brought in like that. So when you're, when you're resoling a pair of shoes, you're supposed to kind of, sometimes you wet the uppers to soften them up to give it some more shape. And when you're when you're gluing the sole on, you're not supposed to bend the leather to the uppers. You're supposed to pull the uppers to the sole to kind of to kind of straighten them out a little bit, a little bit, not too much. I mean, you've you've got sandpaper marks on the heel still where they cut the rubber top lift with the with the machine, with the five in one machine that just cuts it around the edge. Those marks are still there. I mean, those are aesthetics, right? But still, that's what makes it a complete job. Now, the customer sent me these in um, through the mail, and um, we're charging him $320 to resole these. He already paid for soles and heels. I'm not sure what, but I'm, I hope he didn't pay too much. Um, and on the uppers right here, it looks like they've sprayed something on there where you can just kind of scrape that off, and the color comes off. It's not supposed to be doing that. But I've got a feeling that once I open this up, get into it, it's going to be more work than I uh, that I want. It is most of the time whenever it's been repaired the wrong way. I've got a feeling that I'm going to have to replace the foot bed inside. Now, some people say, oh, you can buy a new pair of shoes for that. Of course you can. You can buy 10 pairs of shoes for that, okay? But that's not the point of this video. The point is that customers love their items. They want to bring them back, and they want to continue to wear them and enjoy them. Now, there is a possibility you can buy new shoes, of course. Anything is possible. You have lots of options in life. But that's not what this video is about. Um, and um, as far as what we're going to do to it, we're going to do full soles and heels. We're going to do JR soles and um, strip the uppers and re-dye them, paint them, give that patina to the toe a little bit, and then try to bring them back to, to whatever it was to begin with. Now, these new ones, um, I don't think these are made anymore, but there are Magnani's on sale right now still, anywhere from maybe $250 to about $500. Really depends on what style you're looking for. Um, they're good shoes. They're not too bad. They're Blake stitch, which means that it's stitched from the inside of the shoe to the outside. It's not outsole stitched here. So they're kind of lightweight a little bit and um, not, not as heavy as a Goodyear welt, but some people like this uh, sleek style of, of the design. All right. Oh, we've got a friend in here today. Susie, come here. You're sleeping on the floor. Want to say hi to everybody? Come up here. Come on. Okay, come on. Come on. Oh, now you're being shy. Oh, there you go. There you go. There's Susie. Say hi to everybody. Oh, I know you're shy, aren't you? So Zeus is going to keep me company today. Com company today, aren't you? Aren't you? Of course he does that when you don't want to video him, you know? All right, so let's get started. All righty, here goes nothing. <clears throat> sole looks awfully thick and feels hard. I'm, I'm guessing what they did was they sanded the original sole down and never removed it and put it on top. And this one's got a paper heel block, which is that piece right there. It's fiberboard. It's paper. So that's trash. We're going to get rid of it and put leather heel blocks on there. 
Now we're going to put a little turpentine on the on the edge of the soles just to kind of heat up the glue a little bit. Now what what some guys do they'll spray they'll they'll put it all over the sole even though this came on there but they'll they'll pour it all over the sole. It's a thick leather. It's not going to absorb to get to the glue all the way in. It's not necessary. Just do it on the sides and let it warm up. The heat from the center should be able to should be okay to to remove. But every everybody does it on their own. Teaches teaches to own, they say. Now look at this. This is this is kind of pathetic of the manufacturer. You see these stitches here? looks like it's stitched all the way through the shoe but it's not it's fake stitched it looks like it's just stitched this part anyway looks like it's just stitched to make it look like it's continuous all the way now they have stitched this sh the sole from here all the way to the front to the side you've got another like an inch and a half on each side why don't you just continue to do to do that i never understood that i mean it's more work to Stitch the sole this much before you put it on the shoe rather than put the sole on the shoe and stitch the whole thing. I just never, I don't understand that with some of these manufacturers. I just don't get it. You think it's more work stitching it first and then, and then lining things up and I don't know. Looks like they they removed the sole, which is a good thing. Hmm. Interesting. So why is it so bumpy and why is it so thick? We gotta figure that out. All right, let's continue. So I found out why it was so stiff right there. Looks like they they caked on when they removed the sole to put a new sole on. They caked on all this crazy glue right here. I mean it was just it was just on there so bad. Why in the hell would you put crazy glue on there? Unless you don't trust your own work. Shame. I even squeezed it on the inside too. It looks like I'm barely, I'm barely uh, able to remove that. I don't think thinner is going to do anything to the crazy glue to remove the glue, but let's just try it. I'll just heat that up a little bit. So we've got the footbed out. Okay. That's the footbed right there. That's in drying cracking. This was like this, one piece. Okay. That's where the shank was. It was damaged, by the way. Glad I kind of took it out because you wouldn't know if that shank was broken unless you try to sit there and flex the shoe. Then you'll know that it's broken. But you can't get to it unless you remove everything because this is the backbone of the shoe. That's where it starts first. They assemble everything together. Like that, put that, and then they'll form the uppers around that. So this was a kind of a blessing in disguise that that we took it apart. Now, this bottom layer is paper. I'm going to salvage that. I have to put this under the heat or let it get warmed up again so I can peel it back, peel it off. Now this is just basically like a filler, right, between the leather and the, and the outer sole. So we're going to keep that same fiberboard right there. We're not going to change that because that gives us this the structural shape of what the shoe is. And you don't want to kind of 
you don't want to change too much. Besides, once this is once this gets done, the customer needs to kind of break these in again because they're going to be like new shoes almost. Okay, they're going they're going to have to he's going to have to wear them to form their feet. Um, the welt. This is a glue on welt. Okay, again it's paper. We're going to replace it with leather. This is the areas that manufacturers usually will cut corners. You won't know that until you start wearing it. Right around here where it starts flexing point, it always splits right there. It always splits and cracks like that. And there's really not much you can do with it. Right at the flexing point, right in the middle of the shoe right there. It always falls apart. So we're going to put leather on there, make it more durable. Now, the price, unfortunately, I'm not going to call the customer and say, you got a broken shank, you got a... You got a, you know, paper welt that needs replacing. A footbed is, is all, you know, damaged. I kind of had a, you know, idea of, of what it was going to be like once I took it apart. So, no worries. We've kind of uh, given them some upgrades on the house. So, no worries at all. All right, let's continue. Now, while we've got the sole, the footbed out, you notice some wares in the inside. Looks like he's rubbing one of his pinkies out. The leather's wearing out. Now, normally, I try not to put something on top but to reinforce it because when you slide your foot in, sometimes it catches that piece of leather and it'll peel off again. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take a small piece of leather, maybe size of a, not even a quarter, thinned out their edges so it's kind of zero edges there so it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel the edge of the leather. I'm just going to glue it behind the tear. This way it's going to reinforce the area. It's not going to go anywhere. This foot's not going to rub against it and, and peel off. All right. Let's make sure we get it in the proper exact spot. Perfect. And that hole is closed. Okay. Now we're going to condition the inside while we've got it open, okay? Because the foot goes through a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, sweat and dryness and, and the leather kind of gets abused in the inside. Most people don't usually take care of that because it's difficult to reach. But since we've got it open, might as well do it. Okay, let's continue. All right, got everything glued here. This is the new leather piece that we're going to use. That's a little thicker than than the original, but no worries, we can sand that down a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to, once we glue all these together, we'll sand the fiberboard down a little bit that way, the overall thickness will still be the same. This thing just fell apart. I think the manufacturers do this slots like that. You see how it was like in different few pieces. That wasn't all. It wasn't all coming apart. When it's in one piece, they 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 cut the they cut diagonal lines on there, horizontal lines, I should say. So when the shoe is flexing. When a shoe is worn, it flexes e easily, which is a good thing. But it's still paper. I got a story about Magnani I'm going to share with you guys a little later, which I wasn't too happy about. So we've got the new footbed in here, okay? 
new shank and all that good stuff. Now, this gets a little tricky here because you need to be able to put everything back together, same spot, or else it's not going to be comfortable. Around the heel area, it's pretty, pretty much, there's marks there you can kind of line up. Right here, let's see if you can see it. There's stitch holes there, and there's a little line right there, which is the edge of the footbed. You just have to make sure that you line that up to that. So basically you're you're lining up the stitch holes that are on the uppers to the footbed. That's why we kept that original piece, part of that original piece, so we can have some sort of a pattern to go by. Now what you can do now, if you wanted to narrow the uppers or, or widen them a little bit when you're making the footbed, you can maybe make a little bit narrower, a little bit wider to kind of expand that like that to give it some more room but you know that type of a job most of the time requires a last which is that wooden shape to um to get the proper size doing it this way you're just kind of guesstimating at the customer's size which is not a good way to do it Once this is hammered down, then we can go ahead and clean the uppers. Perfect. Still got to give it some shape to the uppers. Once we clean that up, we'll wet the uppers and, and we'll make it uh, we'll make it look like a shoe again. All right, let's continue. So look at this half and half. Very, very badly done. Now we've got it nice and clean. Almost like a blank canvas. Almost. This is a Feebing's tan leather dye. So what we're going to do, we're going to put a coat on this to kind of darken it a bit. You can use a brush or a daub or whatever you wanna, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, let that dry. That's a little blotchy now, but it'll get better. All right, let's continue. This is the new welt. It's leather.
And you got to be careful when you're putting something like this on because what's going to happen is that the sole that you put on top of this is going to follow this pattern that you're laying down. If you do this wrong and then your sole is not going to look right. Shape of your sole, I should say. Kind of overall look at it from the top. It looks pretty good. Basically the ends where it starts and it ends, you're going to splice the two together, kind of overlapping it like this. So it looks pretty much seamless once it gets done. All right, hammer time. A little bit of hammer time, not too much. All right, it's getting there, not too bad. It's a little bit, something doesn't look right there. One's too straight down, the other one's too curved. So we gotta fix that a little bit. Push this, push this side in and let that side out. All right, let's continue. We don't even have to say it. Oh no, somebody's ready to go outside. Zeus, you gotta go potty? Okay, buddy, I just got, I just wetted the sole. I mean, I can't just walk out. All right, give me two seconds. Let me do some hammer time. Oh Lord, he is itching to go out. Okay, okay, okay. Don't rush me. Oh man, I wanna make a mistake here. right on the edge great now the JR logo is off centered ah. all right it's all good man I swear somebody sent that All right, all right, all right, I'm almost done. All right, we'll just let that sit for a little bit. You wanna show me some loving to the people? Come on, come up here, come on. Ah, yeah, come on, stay up, come here, come on. Oh, man, you're getting tall. <laughs> yeah, big boy. Stop sniffing that sandpaper. Come here, see where you go. You wanna go potty? Come on, let's go potty. All right, let's continue. This way, Susie, come on. Come on, let's go in the front. Good boy. Now this manufacturer put a little hump in the middle to give it that hump the middle of the sole. <laughs> this 
is what I use. People always ask me what kind of cement I use. Well, there it is. Masters All Purpose Cement is what I use. Cool. So tell me something. Are you guys getting tired of hammer time? Or when I say let's continue? I thought Mr. Wonderful was behind me. She's getting there. She's getting there. Man, what a transformation this was. From what it was to what it is now. I think the customer will be happy. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. All right, let's continue. This is what we call a Blake stitched shoe. Basically it stitches from inside out. So that's why you put, you've got this horn right here. You slide the shoe inside and then stitch it all the way around. And that's what it looks like afterwards. We'll clean it up a little bit. All right. Looks good. All right, let's continue. I cut my finger the other day. Can I see that? You guys all jinxed me. You be careful with that knife, man. You'll cut yourself. Well, hell, I just did. Well, not now. A couple of days ago. My point being is that I can't grip the nails very, very easily with that thumb because it's still a little sore. Yeah, it happens. The nail, the nail slipped. <laughs> the knife slipped and it went into my thumb. No, I didn't mean to do it. For Christ's sake. Yeah, I was bored and I was like, you know what? I wonder what I feel like if I cut myself. <laughs> well, I sure found out what it feels like. Anyway, it's hard to grip with your with your thumb like that. We secure the heel, well, you know, the heel to the footbed because it gets nailed inside. 
and when the nail hits the last it cinches so we're getting there let's continue This is just a creasing tool. It's nothing. It just puts a little line on the edge. It's nothing, nothing but for looks. It's like the cherry on top of the cake. Well, that, that's not for looks, I know, but that's... Or you know what I mean. Just gives it a nice little smooth touch. See, do we do it on the inside or on the outside of the sole or the stitch? I think on the outside. Again, this is just a little pattern that I put on here. Nothing structural. People always tell me I'm wasting my time putting details on the bottom because the customer's going to wear it and it's going to go away. I'm like, okay. I guess those, those chefs who create those beautiful masterpieces, huge plate with a little dish in the middle. It looks so beautiful that you don't want to eat it, but you still eat it. Why are they wasting their time doing that? After all, you're just going to eat it. Whatever. This is what I like to do. If somebody doesn't like it. Turn off the video. And that's it. Yeah. Wax it up a little bit, buff it, give it some shine, be ready to go. Let's continue. All right, welcome back. We are done with another project. They turned out pretty good. I think the customer will be very happy with them. I put a lot of work into this, more than what I anticipated. Actually, no, I, I, I did anticipate it. More than I had planned, I should say. 
Now, normally I'll plant, I'll stamp Magnania on here, but uh, about a year ago, I got an email from the company, and um, they weren't happy with the fact that I stamped the bottom of my soles Magnani. And the email was 14 pages of cease and desist. And um, I'm like, okay, whatever, you know. Um, they had gone through my YouTube channel, my Facebook, my Instagram with pictures and videos. And um, I applied for a trademark for Recrafted in USA. They had that application. I mean, they did their homework. Okay, whatever, no big deal. You know, what they don't understand is that I am not making a new shoe and putting Magnani on there. It's still their shoe, okay? Whether I stamp it or not, I'm still getting paid. So if they don't want me to stamp it, okay, I'm not gonna stamp it. But I think what they had an issue with was, you guys see that recrafted in USA stamp? Well, that stamp was underneath their logo. Well, it's not their logo, it's just a, it's not even, it's a small plain text, which any computer, you know, in a program, it's there, you can, you can download it. You don't have to have a copy of their exact logo. So I think what they had an issue with was that because it said recrafted in USA underneath their logo, that's what they had a problem with. So I'm assuming, okay? But I thought it was pretty funny that, that they went through all that trouble to look into, you know, my background just so she can, they can send an email out saying, hey man, don't use our name on your, don't put our name on your, on your souls. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, really? You guys are worried about me when I do like one or two pairs? Okay, maybe a little more. Magnani's a year. That's what you're worried about? Me putting a stamp of Magnani on the bottom of the sole, really unbelievable. After that, I was like, yeah, I mean, I own a couple of pairs of Magnani's. I think they're cool shoes, you know? But for them to do that, it's just, you know, besides I, I'm recrafting it better than what they made it. Maybe that's what they're upset about with the JR Sole blind stitch, you name it. They don't do that kind of stuff. Maybe that's what they're pissed off about because I'm doing better work than they are, please. Anyway, so that's why you're not gonna see that Magnani on there. But either way, it's recrafted by Beto's Leatherworks. Maybe that's a better stamp. Anyway, that's the little story that I wanted to tell you guys. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Thanks to Cindy. Cindy, you're still awesome. I have your painting on, the, on my cabinet over there and also wear the shirt. It's my favorite shirt, by the way. Um, subscribe. Um, Give me a thumbs up, hit the bell notification. Oh, if you have any questions, go to beatos at yahoo.com. Well, not go to, but email me at beatos at yahoo.com. And um, if you have any questions about our certain repairs, you wanna mail stuff in, please don't just mail your item in. Make sure that you communicate with me first. Let me know that they're coming. That way I'll have an idea of what, you know, what to expect page of uh, Beto's Leatherworks on YouTube. There is a file you can download. It's a mailing application. You got to fill that in and send that with your item. That way I know who it belongs to, what needs to be done, all your information. I can call you back so the item doesn't just sit here and, and collect dust. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it. Zeus. Zeus. Come on. Get up here. Come here. Come on. God, this boy's sleeping all day today. Come up here. Say bye to everybody. Oh, come on. Jesus Christ. It's up here. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. All right, so I guess we'll see you guys again next time. Thank you for joining me. Appreciate it. Uh, make any comments you want, share, whatever you want to do. We'd greatly appreciate it. All right, take care now. Bye-bye.